Well, here's someone who uh, may disagree with that. Grant Harold uh, is a mem- was a member of the royal household of their royal highnesses, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, former uh, royal butler. Hello there, Grant. Good afternoon, Janet. Now, is this something you would ever consider doing, or do you think any members <laughs> of the royal household would? Well, can I assure you right now, I'm not wearing my pyjamas. I'm fully dressed as I'm out and about. <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> No, do you know, it, it's, I actually heard about this um, yesterday. I think something came out on my Twitter, and, and I was quite surprised. That, you know when you have a double look, and I thought, am I actually seeing somebody wearing pyjamas in Tesco? Oh, and my. I, I, think, I think somebody complained, and all I can say, I hope that person gets a New Year's honour, because, I mean, to actually walk around in your pyjamas in Tesco, I just don't understand what, what they would be thinking. Really? Well, I guess they're thinking mm. speed and comfort, aren't they? Well, maybe they are, but I'm kind of thinking they're about to appear in the next Broadway production of Bananas in Pyjamas, really. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just don't understand. I mean, pyjamas and dressing gowns, I mean, the, the idea of those is it's something you clear in your bedroom, your dressing room. The dressing gown is obviously um, when you change, you can then wear the dressing gown as you go into the bedroom, you de-robe, get into your bed. And, I mean, anything goes on in the bedroom and dressing room should stay in the bedroom and dressing room and certainly not be taken into into Tesco or any, any other public place for that matter. But at the same time, um, it's interesting that some of the listeners have said it's better than wearing nothing. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I think... I think I think I would. I think I would emigrate. I think I'd leave the country if we all started walking into Tesco um, wearing nothing. Okay, pajamas, tracksuit mm. bottoms, running mm. bottoms, uh, mm. leggings. They're all the same, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I mean, they are and they aren't. I mean, they're, they're obviously, there's comfortable clothing, isn't it? It's, it's things that people are comfortable in. Obviously, if you're, you know, some of it's to the gym. Again, hopefully you're not going to wear your pyjamas if you go to the gym. But I'm, I'm sure there's a few of us that got very early in the morning and quite happy to keep the pyjamas on as you <laughs> wander into the gym. Um, they are, but then again, they're seen in different environments. Again, I, I don't like it when I see somebody wearing running shorts walking around Tesco, unless they're obviously about to do a marathon mm. um, with a weekly shop. It just doesn't look it doesn't look right. And I think the thing with dress codes is we, we've got dress codes there to kind of guide us as to what we should and shouldn't wear. And I think it's the same with, you know, let's say a formal event uh, where you wear a black tie. Well, you wouldn't suddenly wear a black tie to go to the cinema because people would look and think, what an effort. So I think that's the thing. I think it's just wearing the correct attire for the right for the right things and doing dress, your shopping. Sorry, dress, go on. dress codes have changed over the years, though, haven't they? Oh, things absolutely, are absolutely. certainly dramatically, I would say, more casual now than in the last, say, fifty years or so. Things have really changed. I agree. I absolutely agree. They really have changed, and it's quite interesting because they, as I can see, the younger generation, the next generation. Um, obviously, they're a lot more casual than, let's say, our, our parents or, or certainly grandparents were with their dress codes. But on saying that, I met a young chap a few months ago who's only 14, and he actually, during the day, he wears a shirt tie and a jacket. Uh, and this is this is just for going out and about. I was so impressed. Like, Goodness. I thought, oh, God, it's not, it's not the end of the line for dress codes. <laughs> um, Maybe there'll be a the, swing the, back. Yes, well, hopefully I'm, I'm I'm kind of praying and I'm kind of putting all my energy into that to try to get people to stick to dress codes. Don't get me wrong, I, there's nothing wrong. As you've said, times have changed today that we can go out with a pair of jeans, a, a T-shirt or a polo shirt and a jumper. And that's fine. If you're just going to pop into Tesco and do your lo- local shop, fine. You know, you're not going in for a, you're not going for a, a, an audition or a, a meeting or... Or, or even to meet a future employer. You're just in there to do your weekly shop, but you're certainly not going in there to go and lie down in some corner and go to sleep. <laughs> right, OK, yes, that's a crucial difference, isn't it? Even the younger royals now, I'm thinking of William and Harry, um, they mm. frequently appear at public events without ties mm. now, don't they? They do, and I think it's interesting because I've, I've just done a, a thing in a, a national newspaper today. We were talking about, um, odd enough, about dress codes and, and handbags, dare I say. And I was actually saying it's interesting with the royals. They do obviously um, set an example, and going forward into the future, the way they dress is how other, other people copy how the younger royals dress. There's no question on that at all, especially with the Duchess of Cambridge. And I think this is not this is certainly not a new thing. I mean, you, you can go back to the time of uh, Queen Victoria's son, who once forgot to undo his bottom waistcoat button. 
And today, the etiquette states that when you wear a waistcoat, you should always leave the last button undone. Now, what's really funny about this is the, the later he became obviously King Edward VII. He accidentally did that. It wasn't apparently, history says it wasn't oh intentional. He just forgot. And then it was seen and everyone copied. So I think with the younger royals, if they decide that it's time to stop wearing ties and that, who knows, maybe... Uh, the younger generation will still want to put on a nice jacket and a shirt and maybe not wear a tie. A tie, and that's fine as long as they're still looking smart. There's there's nothing wrong with that. And as I say, it, but again, it depends what the event is. You wouldn't find one of the younger royals going to a black tie event and not wearing a black tie. Or in their pajamas. There's a limit, definitely isn't not, there? Definitely not in the pajamas. <laughs> I, I can't think, I think, quite. Again, Picture the day when we see them in their pajamas, what even on no, holiday snaps or anything like I, that. I, I think, I think, I think we would all say that. I think for anyone, as I said earlier, I think to see anyone in pajamas in the wrong environment, other than the bedroom, is just not the not the done thing. And you know, for all, I mean, for those two ladies yesterday, they might as well have been walking around with their teddy bears and the hot water bottles and be done with it. <laughs> Grant, great to hear from you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me on the show. All right, bye-bye. That's uh, Grant Harold, former royal butler and uh, member of the royal household for their royal highnesses, Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall.